Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Thursday. Happy Thursday from me and Mayday. I don't know what is going on with this little baby. I think it's because she has had CBD, but she is just like, it's like having like a, I have like a little monkey and I don't know what this is, but okay, we're going to keep it. Anyways, guys, we're back to talk about the fact that an executive producer is speaking out against the Caroline Brandy of it all, and that's not it. We're not stopping there. So please enjoy the cat. We also have more Andy Cohen and Liam McSweeney stuff to talk about. Lots to discuss. So now before we jump in, you guys know how this works. If you haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Maybe after this intro, she'll still be here. I don't know. Here we go. All right, guys. Mayday is still here, obviously, as you can see, but we have to get into it. Mayday, you're going to have to relax. Thanks, girl. Now, with that, thank you to page six because it looks like Real Housewives of Ultimate or Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip executive producer is claiming Brandy Glanville disrespected Caroline Manzo but did not sexually violate her. So an executive producer of the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip claims in new court documents that Caroline Manzo felt disrespected by Brandy but was not sexually violated by her. Now, as Page Six previously reported, the Real Housewives of New Jersey alum sued Bravo and Peacock earlier this year, claiming Brandy harassed her and kissed her without consent. Um, yeah, this is obviously she's claiming too that production knew about it. Caroline also claimed in court documents that Brandy then proceeded to mount Manzo on the couch, holding Manzo down with her body, forcibly squeezed Manzo's cheeks together, and thrust her tongue into Manzo's mouth while humping her. In new court documents filed in response to Caroline Manzo's lawsuit, Lisa Shannon claims Caroline told production at the time that Brandy's alleged actions that evening had triggered memories of her past childhood trauma, but did not mention an assault. Our primary concern at that point was making sure that Caroline felt safe, is what the documents read. She told us that she felt safe, that she wanted to continue to film, and that she did not want Brandy to be sent home. Shannon then claims that Caroline was not left alone with Brandy that evening and the following morning, and Caroline told Shannon, Lisa Shannon, and other production members that she still felt safe and wanted to continue filming the reality series. In a conversation with Lisa Shannon, which has been reenacted in the documents, Caroline purportedly told her, listen, I feel safe, okay? I feel your support. This is for me. I'm dealing with something that has been buried deep in my soul for 50 years. The documents also noted that Following Brandy's incident with Caroline, production ceased, including Brandy in group activities. However, other cast members, including Phaedra Parks, allegedly perceived the events differently. All of us thought that we were having fun, is what Phaedra told Caroline. No one knew about whatever has happened to you in the past. Now, Lisa Shannon also claims that Caroline Manzo flew home from Morocco because the rest of the cast informed Caroline in a group text that they were going to visit the only fan star at her hotel, which was the only time Caroline allegedly asked not to be filmed. At that time, she asked the production crew not to film her, and we honored that request, is what Lisa Shannon said. Other than that inc incident, Caroline was never asked not to be, um, well, she never asked not to be filmed, or expressed to Lisa Shannon or to her knowledge, anyone else from production, that she was uncomfortable being filmed. Hmm. Lisa Shannon continued, noting that Caroline willingly allowed production to film her discussing her decision to depart the trip. Lisa Shannon's response also notes that the network paid Caroline in full despite leaving early. Caroline's, att Caroline's attorney did not respond to Page Six's request for comment but brandy previously blasted caroline manzo sexual harassment claims as absurd and false and while filming brandy followed what the producers asked of her and there was no sexual assault is what her rep told page six she is innocent of these absurd accusations that have weighed on her mental and physical health for far too long without a word of support from bravo peacock or shed this is the gift that just keeps on giving now isn't it because this shit does not stop 
I don't even know where to go from here. I don't know. But I'm going to go. Now, I'm going to keep this moving and I'm going to go somewhere else. <laughs> here we go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I mean, this is another shit show. Page six put out another article saying, did Andy Cohen's racy photo hijinks, drug-fueled self-pleasure confession slip Kelly Ripa's mind? What? Bravo and its reality ringmaster Andy Cohen have recently been ensnared in various battles, legal and otherwise, with Real Housewives stars over allegedly bad behavior, all of which the host has adamantly denied. Most recently, former Real Housewives of New York star Leah McSweeney filed a lawsuit claiming that Andy did the white blowy stuff with other Bravo stars and that the culture at the network is so crude that one senior producer, not Andy Cohen, routinely sends unsolicited pictures of their genitalia to lower level production employees. There was also other allegations. But last week, one of his besties, Kelly Ripa, rushed to his defense on her podcast, Let's Talk Off Camera, declaring herself so angry and so offended by the allegations. Really, Kelly? There was not a single thing, for example, in an episode of your very own podcast from less than a year ago that might have tipped you off at least to the possibility that Andy Cohen has it in him to be anything less than a choir boy, coming from page six. Back in May, the daytime legend had Andy Cohen on as a guest and told the story about how she had once found herself in an awkward workplace situation because she received an unexpected dick pic that he had sent her. So my work iPad is open and I'm sitting here reading through my notes and okay. She said the live with Kelly and Mark executive producer, Michael Gelman is over my shoulder and trying to show me something. And suddenly a completely erect penis pops up. It's like a text from Andy Cohen showing off a potential romantic partner's privates. Now, not to leave all of the dish to Kelly Ripa, but Andy Cohen cheerfully chimed in himself, joking that when he gets frustrated by the lack of freedom that comes with parenthood, he reminds himself what he'd be doing if he was magically child-free again. He said hanging around his apartment, and he said masturbating and getting high. Hmm. If not the random boner spam and drug-fueled masturbation marathons, um, it's hard to imagine what would make Kelly Ripa think that someone's a potential candidate for some slightly unsavory antics behind closed doors. Apparently, based off of Page Six, this lady has seen some things. Either way, Kelly Ripa's publicist told Page Six, Kelly never referenced Leah McSweeney on the recent podcast and doesn't even know who she is, but Kelly stands 100% by her defense of Andy and his character. Mm. Okay. Well, doesn't stop there, as you guys know. Leah McSweeney, speak, since we're talking about her, apparently she wants to leave New York soon. Um, what's her breaking point? Well, she said a stranger threatened her 16-year-old daughter on the subway. Now, Daily Mail reported on Leah's latest complaints, and they come as tons of New Yorkers vocalize their frustrations with the perceived uptick in crime. Just the other day, Bethany Frankel claimed a stranger punched her in the face. Although Leah was an insult or assaulted, she explained how the city had become unbearable. Leah, who has previously shared how she worked through a drug and alcohol addiction, noted in her video how addicts were struggling in the streets of New York City. People are smoking crack for breakfast in Times Square. My daughter also had someone on the train tell her that they were going to turn her into a pile of meat on the floor, and I'll be leaving New York as soon as possible. Now, Leah, who founded a streetwear brand called Married to the Mob, didn't stop with her Instagram video. After ranting on social media, she went on the right-wing program, Fox and Friends, to talk more about the issue. They did a whole segment about their fears of the city. During her appearance, she described a feeling of heartbreak because of how New York City has allegedly changed. She insinuated that local officials are lying about crime and claimed that her experiences from walking around the city outweigh the crime statistics provided by the city. The worst thing is we're being gaslit by the politicians who tell us that it's actually safer than ever, and it's not. I'm sorry, there's no way. I'm out there, I'm on the train, I'm walking around, it's not safe. Hmm. All right, guys, well, I want to hear your opinion, so pop off in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, and we'll see you in a little bit. Love you guys.